I'm so excited. A couple days ago was the first official planting in the new vegetable garden. And that first official crop is potatoes. In this video, I'm going to show you how to plant potatoes and care for them in the ground, raised beds, even in containers. Hey, I'm Brian. If you're looking for an online garden community that offers tips, tricks, and support to help take your garden to the next level, you're in the right place. Get started now by clicking subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss anything. Now let's get growing. So before I plant my potatoes, I always chit them or sprout them. Basically, I put them in an egg carton and in a, a bright area. It doesn't have to be full sun. And what you're going to do is you're going to see the eyes start to sprout and they'll get maybe quarter inch half inch long we're not looking to have the growth like if your potatoes were in the garage for too long and all of a sudden you check them and they've got like six to eight inch um, sprouts on them we don't want them off to that good of a start a half inch is really kind of the the the, the, the max i think a couple of mine have been too long and they, they're a little bit longer than that but they should still be fine now there's a big argument whether or not to chit your potatoes or to pre-sprout them. I do it because I feel like uh, it gets them into the ground sooner and faster, just like starting seeds indoors. Another reason I do it is because some potatoes aren't viable. They don't put out sprouts for whatever reason. Maybe there's a little rot going on. Whatever the reason is, they don't always sprout. You don't want to spend, especially if you have a small space garden, you don't want to take up extra space planting a potato and then nothing comes up. So those are the two reasons I do it. Let me know down below if you've grown potatoes before and whether or not you did it and why or why not. Now, like I said, I've been waiting to get my new garden finished to be able to plant in it. So the potatoes have been pushed off a little longer than I normally would. Uh, they're still fine. They're getting a little shrivelly, a little soft, and that's okay if they're already sprouted that's okay if they start to get soft and wrinkly because the, the, the beginnings of roots are right there at each one of those sprouts. And as soon as you put them in the ground, they're gonna, those roots are gonna extend and they're gonna be able to start pulling in water and nutrients. And really the potato that's on there is gonna be obsolete and it's gonna rot away anyway. If you're starting out with a soft wrinkly potato and you have not chitted it yet, you might have some problems there because there's no roots to support that. So in this video, I'm gonna be planting them in the ground. They're raised beds, but they're six inches, so it really is in the ground. The same method would apply for raised beds. And then at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how to plant them in containers. And you can get a good potato harvest out of containers. I'm also gonna be doing a little experiment. I have always purchased seed potatoes. So little potatoes that are ready to plant um, rather than leftover grocery store potatoes or going to this grocery store and getting a bag of potatoes and then planting them. The reason I've always done it that way is because I've always heard to make sure your potatoes are disease free, you want to get seed potatoes from a garden center or online. And in past videos, I've told, I've had people tell me that they've grown grocery store potatoes just fine. So this year I'm gonna be doing one full bed of leftover grocery store potatoes that I did, I chitted them. So hang with me throughout the season and I will show you whether or not it was fine to plant grocery store potatoes. So I am going to be doing a no dig method of planting potatoes. Typically, and if you're not doing no dig, uh, you would dig a long trench, maybe six to eight inches deep, put your potatoes in the bottom, cover it back up. I'm trying not to disturb the soil as much as possible. So what I'm going to do is dig a hole for each potato, just with a trowel, just kind of stick it in five to six inches, pull that soil over, and the potato's gonna go in that hole. Much like you would plant bulbs, tulips, daffodils. In the bottom of that hole, to help sustain the tomato plant right down at root level, I'm gonna be throwing in a handful of Neptune's Harvest crab and lobster and Neptune's Harvest uh, kelp meal. You can also use bone and blood meal if you don't have Neptune's Harvest. Now how far apart, whether you're doing a trench or whether you're planting them individually like I am, potatoes need a certain amount of spacing. The average spacing that I use is about one foot between each potato. If you go much closer, you might get more potatoes in that spot, but they'll be smaller. If you go further away, 
you'll get less potatoes, but bigger ones. I've found a foot apart seems to be kind of a happy medium. I'm saving some space along the edge of the bed in order to put in some companion plants that will help the potatoes ward off uh, pests. So stick around for that. But that's it for planting. Very simple. Uh, water them in well. Potatoes like a rich, moist soil, so don't let it dry out. If you have um, a lot of variation between dry, wet, dry, wet, dry, wet, your potatoes are going to be misshapen. Now, I don't have any drip irrigation in this bed, so I am going to have to water with the hose for a few weeks until I get that all installed. Watering potatoes is very similar to watering tomatoes in that they're related. You don't want to get the leaves wet if you can help it. Obviously, you can't help the rain, but as far as what you're doing with the hose, don't stand over the potatoes and spray the leaves. Uh, Potatoes are very susceptible to blight and other fungal diseases, and wet leaves are going to kind of foster that. At the end of the video, I'll tell you another way other than companion planting to help ward off fungal diseases. As potatoes grow, they tend to push themselves up out of the ground. And you don't want that to happen because when potatoes are exposed to sunlight, they turn green, and that makes them poisonous probably not poison enough to kill you. For some people who might be a little more sensitive, it could make you sick. So in order to keep that from happening, because there's no way to stop them pushing their potatoes up, you want to earth them up. And if you're doing a traditional trench, you can just dig the soil from the sides and just kind of toss it over uh, that where the stems meet the ground just to cover up those potatoes. You can even cover up some of the stems and that's totally fine, even covering up some of the leaves just leave enough out to have them photosynthesize. So don't cover more than, you know, 30 to 40% of the leaves. Now for me, I'm doing no dig, so I'm just gonna bring in some extra compost and just help mound it up um, a little bit over where those potatoes might be exposed. Throughout the growing season, you want to feed them a well-balanced liquid uh, organic fertilizer. I'm gonna be using Neptune's Harvest uh, Tomato and Veg. So overall, I mean, potatoes are a pretty easy crop to grow. They are susceptible, like I mentioned, to some fungal diseases. So don't get the leaves wet and hang around for one more tip. But pests, the biggest pest for potatoes is the Colorado potato beetle. And they hit places other than Colorado. One way to prevent the Colorado potato beetle from harming your potatoes is to put floating row covers or fleece just over the bed just creates a physical barrier between the outside world where the Colorado potato beetle is and your potatoes. If you don't like the look of fleece over your garden, you can do some companion planting. Now there are several companion plants uh, for tomatoes. I go into more detail on this in my new book, which is available at Amazon. I'll put the link down in the description, uh, Companion Planting for Beginners. But for potatoes, there's a few plant relationships that you need to know about. First of all, I planted some alyssum around the edges of the bed. I planted some dill and cosmos in the middle. Now, when you are going for companion plants that uh, the flower is what attracts, uh, and, and these flowers tend to attract ladybugs, hoverflies, lacewings, and they're gonna take care of the pests on your potatoes, including the Colorado potato beetle. But you wanna make sure those are flowering when the plant, the potato plants are in their growth period. So you either want to start the seeds earlier of these companion plants, or like I did, just cheat a little bit and get transplants from the garden center. Now at the same time I'm planting potatoes, I'm gonna be planting some bush beans around the edge of the bed. Just some seeds, sowing some uh, bush bean seeds. Blue Lake is a great one. Dragon Tongue is my new favorite. Bean plants are known to repel or confuse the Colorado potato beetle, and so it keeps them away from plants that those beans are near. In turn, beans being a legume, they collect nitrogen in their roots and share it with their neighbors. Potatoes are hungry plants. They like nitrogen, and so it's a symbiotic relationship. Now, there's a couple plants you don't want near your potatoes. Number one would be a black walnut tree. Black walnut trees produce a substance in their roots called juglone, and that will either kill 
or stunt the growth of certain plants planted anywhere in the vicinity of the tree. And just know that the, the tree roots are two to three times the diameter of the actual tree. So don't plant uh, any nightshades. Any nightshades are susceptible most to this juggalone. So don't plant them anywhere near a black walnut tree. You also don't want to plant potatoes next to another nightshade like tomatoes. They share a lot of the same diseases and you don't want them passing it back and forth. So keep your potatoes about 15 to 20 feet away from your uh, tomatoes, your eggplant, your peppers. If you've watched some of my videos in the past, you know that I use an aspirin solution to take uh, care of some of the fungal problems that nightshades get. Now this only works on nightshades, potatoes, tomatoes, eggplant, peppers. And how it works is the, the acid, the salicylic acid in aspirin actually mimics a hormone in the plant. When a plant is under attack, it pumps out this hormone that causes its defense to be up and ready to take on that disease. Unfortunately, a lot of times that disease has already taken hold before that hormone gets pumped through the plant. So by mixing up an aspirin solution, and you can use 600 milligrams of aspirin crushed into about a gallon of water, letting it dissolve, spray that on your plants, nightshades only, every two weeks, uh, especially during wet weather, because that's when fungal diseases tend to pop up. And that is going to increase your plant's immune system by mimicking that hormone when there's no disease. So it'll be ready if one starts to try and get in. Now, if you're against using aspirin in the garden, you can make a tea out of willow bark. I've never done it, but there are, just Google it and you'll find a way to do it. Now, what about container grown potatoes? I've got a galvanized wash tub here that I'm gonna use. Make sure you've got drainage holes in it. Plenty of drainage holes in whatever you plant in. I'm gonna fill it a little over halfway with whatever compost I'm gonna use or potting soil. I'm gonna add my fertilizer the, the granular fertilizer, uh, mix it around through the soil, and then I'm gonna plant my potatoes just about halfway down uh, beneath the soil level where it is now. You're leaving some room to be able to earth up the potatoes as they grow and tend to push out of the soil. In this size container, two potatoes would probably be enough. Uh, I'm gonna put three because I have it and you know, I'm okay getting smaller potatoes. I actually like smaller potatoes rather than the big starchy ones. So as those plants grow and they need to be topped up, go ahead and do that with some more potting soil or compost. Feed them just like the ones in the ground or raised beds, a liquid organic fertilizer, well-balanced. Uh, well-balanced just means the three numbers, you know, pretty even, not too much of a variation. You don't want all nitrogen, which is the first number. All those numbers should be in there. Um, but that's pretty much as hard as it gets. If you learned something, please give the video a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed already, please do. And consider sharing this with friends uh, on social media. I definitely appreciate it. Hopefully they will too. I'll see you guys next time.